Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. It took just one swing of Desmond Jennings' bat to determine the winner in last night's game. Today, Jeremy Hellickson tries to follow Chris Archer's dazzling home debut and leapfrog the O's in the AL East race. It's the Rays and the Orioles game two on Sun Sports. Country night here at Tropicana Field for game two of the series. The Rays will take on the Baltimore Orioles. We'll hear Martina McBride after this game. And for the Rays, game two of a 10 game homestand. After last night's win, the Rays are three and a half back. Boston leading the East by two over New York, three over Baltimore. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats, Todd Callis along in just a moment. Well, on the mound last night, Chris Archer hit the bullseye, but it was Desmond Jennings who hit what turned out to be the game-winning home run. B.A., the decision by Joe Madden to drop Jennings down in the order. Another good move by Madden. Well, it started in the Miami series here at Tropicana Field, and what Joe Madden wanted from Desmond Jennings was, you know what, don't worry about getting on base. Go down there and start getting the barrel to the baseball. Hit the ball hard. Well, what has he done? He's gone down there and been extremely productive. Has hit safely in 8 out of 10 games, and he's been using the whole field. He has that up-the-middle approach right now, spraying the ball all over the place, getting that extra good long look at it, and the numbers speak for themselves. He will stay down in the order tonight and hopefully stay productive. On the mound tonight for the Rays, Jeremy Hellickson, and what a conundrum he has been. His walks are down, his strikeouts are up, but so would be the numbers with men in scoring position. He's hoping for better things tonight. Well, his last start against the Cleveland Indians, he may have had a growth moment there. You know, Jeremy's had trouble with leads all season long. In that game against the Indians, he had a 4 to nothing lead. The Indians had cut it to 4-3. to three. And then all of a sudden in the fifth inning, a couple of back-to-back -back base hits. First and second, and you're like, here we go again. Or maybe not. Jeremy Hellickson knuckles down against Nick Swisher and Mark Reynolds and retires them on a feeble pop-up and a weak ground ball picking up his third win. He will look to take that confidence boost from the Indians game directly into today's game. After last night's win here at the Trop, the Rays have won four straight at home. Hoping for more of that. Another positive coming out of last night. The manner in which Fernando Rodney closed it out. Utilizing perhaps his plantain power. More on that. Todd Callis joins us after the break. Swings, bat swings, and strikes. I mean, that's that's the recipe for him. If he's throwing strikes and you're seeing some bad swings, heads up. I think the last three or four.
Saturday night, good crowd showing up at Tropicana Field for the Orioles and the Rays and a little post-game concert as well. Middle game of this three-game series. And it was good to see the swagger back for one closer named Fernando Rodney. He's been a little bit hot and cold since the WBC in the Major League season. But you can see, ever since he left town going into the last road trip, beginning in Miami, he has been locked down. 1-0. Did pitch in a couple of non-save situations, but four for four in those saves. And last night, it looked like the old Fernando. And here's Joe Madden and Roddy himself talking about that. Fastball was where he wanted it to be, up to 99 miles an hour. The changeup was good. Bad swings. Bad swings and strikes. I mean, that's that's the recipe for him. If he's throwing strikes and you're seeing some bad swings, heads up. I think the last three or four started I've been having. I was going to feel better and better. And I think that's what I... Um, do one, two, three, and tonight because everything comes together. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking more time, piece by piece. And, you know, when you try to go too much quick, it's, sometimes we have a problem there. But tonight, I think I hit the perfect time for that. Retired Mark Hakis, Adam Jones, and Chris Davis. A one, two, three stellar performance by Fernando Rodney. If he gets back in the groove, look out. The Rays could be on a nice little run here as they play game two of this 10-game homestand. We'll have the first pitch in two minutes and 38 seconds here on Sunsport. Ball on Sun Sports is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most innovative lineup ever. Shop at choosenissan.com. By Joseph A. Bank, we fit everyone. Visit josephabank.com. And by Toyota. Let's go places. A look outside Tropicana Field. The fans still filing in. For the middle game of this series between the Rays and the Baltimore Orioles. Rays winners last night two to one and they are six and four against Baltimore in the season series. Sweet Bay Supermarket presenting the Ray of uh, the Orioles lineup. They'll present the Rays lineup in the bottom of the inning. Nate McLeod leads it off for Baltimore. Manny Machado hits second followed by Dick Markakis. Adam Jones, Chris Davis and Matt Wieters the part of this order. Buck Showalter has J.J. Hardy hitting seventh with Chris Dickerson, the D.H. Ryan Flaherty at second base hitting ninth. Well, taking the mound late this afternoon for the Tampa Bay Rays. Going to be right-hander Jeremy Hellickson making his 13th start of the season. 
His numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. He's coming off of a win in Cleveland against the Indians. He went five innings, gave up three earned runs, continues to search for that consistency that we see from time to time in little spurts. Let's take a look at the defense as it lines up behind Jeremy in the outfield left to right. Johnson, Jennings, and Joyce across the infield third to first. Longoria, Escobar, Zobrist, and Loney. Jose Lobatone will be behind the plate. Well, this is an important game for the Rays. Of course, all of them are important, but in terms of positioning, the Rays have an opportunity with a little help to make a move in the American League East. Here's Hellickson all set to start this one. First pitch of the game into Nate McLeod. There's a strike, and that first pitch is presented by Pitcher Penny. Well, the first move that they can make is come out, win this ball game, and leapfrog Baltimore. They could move ahead of Baltimore by a half game with the victory here tonight. One ball and one strike. The Red Sox are playing a doubleheader. The Angels are at Fenway Park, and the Angels have a 7 to 2 lead in the top of the eighth inning of that first game. So it's conceivable. If the Angels could sweep the Red Sox and the Rays win here tonight, they could pick up a game and a half on Boston. Clout out to center field, and Jennings takes care of that. And that would move the Rays to within two games of Boston. Of course, they'll have to finish out this series with Baltimore tomorrow, but the Red Sox would be on their way in here to Tropicana Field. And the next club in on this 10-game homestand. And the Rays have been moving right along. They've won nine out of their last 12, gained a few games in the standings, even though still down in fourth. But you're right, they could close ground quickly here in the next three or four days. Machado taking a fastball off the plate. Ball, no strikes. But as they say, uh, one thing at a time. Tonight it's Hellickson against the Orioles. The butt attempt of Machado misses. One and one. This is already Jeremy's third start against the Baltimore Orioles. He's one and oh, ERA 8.36. Has picked the right day. Two balls and a strike. And one thing that this Baltimore lineup has done with Jeremy Hellickson has been extremely aggressive. They have not waited around to get to that changeup with two strikes. They have been attacking him early throughout the first two starts he's had against them. And that's inside three and one. So Hellickson then given. That scenario, B.A., would it be uh, the need for command early for him? Yeah. Well, and especially given his first inning struggles. The base hit bounced through the right side with Zobris shaded towards second. Machado goes the other way and has a single. You know, Jeremy Hellickson put himself in a bad spot by falling behind three and one, but then he goes down and away like he should. But a nice job of hitting. Manny Machado did not get greedy. A lot of hitters in the 3-1 count are going to come unglued. He just took the pitch where it was and just popped it through the other way. Mature. Yeah, that's one of the things about Machado. To be so young, he is so mature. Machado will be 21 in uh, well, a little under a month. How about that? 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he plays the game like a, you know, a seasoned vet. Dick Markakis. Pitches outside. You know, some guys are, are, are extremely talented. He's extremely talented with a great feel for the game. And that's usually something that comes along with time. He's got it at 20 years old. Yeah, it, the behavior on the field, you can sense that just by watching him. He took the field yesterday at third base in the uh, bottom of the first inning. And went over and shook hands with Tom Foley, the race third base coach. He's Tom Foley. He recognizes a good infielder when he sees one. Better believe it. 
and he's been flying under the radar, not so much anymore. You know, you hear a lot about Trout, Harper, the Nationals, and Manny Machado right there with him. It's outside two and one. That's one of the things you like about Machado with all of the other young players getting the spotlight. His approach to that is, hey, it will come if it comes at all. I'm going to play baseball. And let all of that take care of itself. Uh, again, that's refreshing. Yeah, uh, the, the maturity, the, the being humble. Well, now Hellickson behind Markakis, three and one, second straight hitter. He's fallen behind this way. Well, that's the one thing you cannot do with this Baltimore lineup. If you're not a, a overpowering, blow you away type of pitcher, consistently being behind. Not the way to go. It's popped up. Foul ball, and Longoria is after it with a play. Two gone. I'll tell you what, that's where you take a deep sigh of relief if you're Jeremy Hellickson. You fell behind three and one, and then threw a fastball right down Broadway. And you get the weak pop up by Marcakis. That's when you get back up on the mound and say, you know what, today may be my day. Let's go get aggressive. Well, you know, a hitter like Marcakis with Hellingson out there, great changeup, 3 1. I mean, it's a fastball count, but against him, you might have in the back of your mind that changeup. You could, and, and guess what? If you do, shame on you. That's where, that's exactly where Jeremy Hellickson wants you. You're, you're, you're thinking right along with him. Yep. And if he can get you in between like that, he's got you. And and that's what it is. It's that fastball changeup combo. That's where a hitter, that's why when you talk about a hitter's approach and a plan when he goes to the plate, you've got to stay disciplined in the plan. And you go up there, if you get 3-1, you've got to pick what you're looking for and where you're looking for. And if you're thinking about two different pitches, you're in big trouble. A ball, no strikes here to Jones. Swings through the fastball. One and one. And it's like the, the field of dreams. When he said, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to load the bases, so he's probably going to throw you down in a way. But watch out for the in your ear. You can't, you can't look for <laughs> <Yeah>. both. <laughs> You're to cover all that? Yeah, right. Probably not. Yeah. Toward the middle, nice backhand and stop by Zobrich. Throw to first will take Loney off the bag and a nice pickup by Loney. He tried to stay on the bag as long as he could and then vacated to come up with that. And that'll be a base hit for Jones. You know, it almost looked like Ben Zobris when he backhanded that wanted to go to second, but Escobar was not going to get there in time. So then you turn and throw, didn't get enough on it. Loney did everything that he could to stay on the bag and stretch. Just couldn't do it. But a nice backhand stop because if that gets by him, you're probably looking at second and third. And at first and second, two outs in the first, and here's Chris Davis. For the first time the Rays face him tonight, two men on. Yeah, and he's had some success off Jeremy. Five out of seven with some damage. And hitting 393 with men in scoring position. Strike one. Not a bad pitch right there. That ball probably two or three inches off the plate away, and look where he deposits it. That's some of that power that we talk about with Chris Davis. We want to know why he's got 20 more runs, because he can hit it out anywhere in the ballpark. Yeah, that was on a 3-2 pitch. The first of four hits he had in that game. One and one. You can see that great power. Center field will not contain him. No, and right there, that number three to left field, two of the three have come against the Rays. Look out, a foul ball off the facing of the Rays dugout. It's one and two. Well, you're facing Chris Davis, the 
league leader in home runs with 20. Second in the uh, league and hitting at 350, but against right handed pitching, he's the best hitter in the American League. He's hitting 378 against right handers. Two on, two out, one to the count. Fastball in. I like it. I look right now. I love the sequence that Jeremy's going with. I'm trying to think along with him, and I thought, you know, good fastball in right there. Both of them have been effective, even though they've been off the plate. They've been up close and tight. You start pitching them back and forth like that, in and out, change speeds. That's what you got to do to a hitter like Davis. Big cut, a foul ball off the breaking ball. Oh, this is Chris Davis is seeing everything that Jeremy Hellickson has to offer here. Change up, curve ball, heaters close to him. Two and two. A shot on the corner in and just a little off. Yep. Full count. That's the one he wanted there. That's the one he wanted to close him out on. Now that ball's off the plate. Now theoretically you've got to come back onto the plate in a full count. Maybe not with Davis, but you're also going to have the runners going. Full head of steam here for a guy with extra base juice. Three two runners go and it's popped up. That's a big league pop up in the middle of the diamond and that's Longoria who just moved over to the first base side of second and out of the ship Longoria makes that catch. Two men left we go to the bottom of the first no score. Tonight's race game presented in high definition brought to you by H.H. Gregg. Fans still coming into the ballpark here on country night. Line up for the Rays. Presented by Sweet Bay Supermarket. Matt Joyce, Ben Zobras, and Kelly Johnson. Evan Longoria hits in front of James Loney and then Last night's hitting hero, Desmond Jennings in the sixth spot. Luke Scott will DH. Jose Lobatone hits eighth tonight, catches, and Yudel Escobar, the shortstop, bats ninth. Well, taking the mound this afternoon for the Baltimore Orioles is going to be right hander Kevin Gaussman, one of their mega prospects. First round draft pick out of LSU in 2012. He was fourth overall, making his fourth start here in the big leagues. You see 0-2 with a 7.20. However, his last start 
was an outstanding start against the Detroit Tigers. You know how strong that offense is. He went six innings, gave up just five hits, one earned run, did not walk anybody. It was a good arm. That fastball, 94, sometimes better. And the first pitch, fastball, 94, and he misses. One ball, no strikes. Now he will throw the four-seamer, the two-seamer. He's got a split. Joyce founds it back, so the Rays get their very first look ever at this tall right-hander. Yeah, very good arm. And like you said, big-time velocity on the heater. Got a slider, too, but inconsistent with that pitch. Sometimes it's got good tilt, good bite. Other times it'll look just like a cutter. Pretty good changeup. One and two in around 80. Yeah. <laughs> I swung and missed at that. <laughs> Into the dirt, skips it in. 2 2. He's out of Colorado. But his family is from Nebraska. And his great grandfather, one of the reasons he wound up at LSU and he was drafted by the Dodgers out of high school did not sign. High foul that's down near the bullpen and in to the bullpen out of the reach of McLeod and Machado. One of the reasons he uh, went to LSU great program he, he thought they'd have a chance to go to the College World Series which they seem to do all the time. His great grandfather helped Put up the lights at Rosenblatt Stadium. No kidding. Yeah. And he's got a lot of family there. And one of the uh, one of the parts of the deal to put up the lights, a little tapper back to the mound, is that he would have tickets to the College World Series in perpetuity. And so the family always went. And he dreamed about going to the College World Series and pitching at Rosenblatt Stadium. Well, yeah, then you go to LSU. You go to LSU for two reasons. To get to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha or to get your pitch count up to about 190. <laughs> Either one. Yeah. And if you survive that, that's you right. got a chance to be ready. Then you'll get 105 in the big leagues. <laughs> and like it. Here, here it's Ben Zofras. One ball, no strikes. Ben hitting 250. And ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Three and oh. So the Rays trying to get the measure of this young right hander. Strike says Lance Barksdale. Barksdale calling the balls and strikes. A nine year veteran of Major League umpiring He's out of Mississippi. It's out of play. The count is full. Well, you can see already Gaussman, very repeatable delivery. Simple mechanically, has good long arm action, good. Hand action out in front. Got that prototypical pitcher build. Rider into right field. Arcakis will not get there. He was shaded toward right center. Zobris is on his way to second with a stand up double. Zobris with his 13th two base hit. Oh, that was just well placed by Ben Zobris. He reached out on that breaking ball and just hooked that softly into right field. Arcakis. Could not get there. He said he was shaded. He just flips that ball down 15, 20 feet from the right field line. And the Rays are in business. So a scoring opportunity for the Rays. Here's Kelly Johnson. Oh. 
Takes the first pitch strike a fastball. I'll tell you what that was an impressive piece of hitting by Ben Zobers because he hadn't seen the breaking ball and he hasn't seen this guy pitch before. And you get to a full count probably the last thing you're thinking is the breaking ball. He gets it but he kept his hands back gave himself a chance and he gets it in there. It's impressive. Ah. Pitch on the corner. Oh two. A couple of fastballs to get ahead of Kelly. A couple of fastballs that were out over the plate and down right where Kelly Johnson likes to launch. In a bit. One and two. I'll tell you what, that was close. That was close. Good pitch there by Gaussman. Come right back now with that change up away. And a swing and a foul tip strikeout gets him on the change. Uh, you know, two straight heaters for a strike, a fastball in. Now slow him down and go away. Take a little bit off that. 84 miles an hour, get him out in front. Great job of sequencing there with Gaussman. I'll tell you something else. You, you have Matt Weeders behind the plate. I mean, for a young pitcher to be able to have a guy like this as accomplished as he is as a defensive catcher, calling games, knowing these hitters like he does, it's one thing you don't have to worry about out on the mound. First pitch to Evan Longoria. That drops in there for a strike. Well, that's a real luxury for Buck Showalter to have Weeders back there. He, he runs the game. He, he runs the uh, pitchers' meetings. He's a coach on the field. He's a, he, I mean, he is a walking scouting report on opposing hitters. Not only does he know him well, but with this being obviously a division game, he knows these race hitters at the back of his hand. And so he can take this young pitcher and try to nurse him through. Ground ball headed into left. A base hit. Zobris on his way to the plate. The throw from the cloud cut off. And the Rays take the lead, one nothing. RBI single by Longoria. Evans' 36th run batted in. The Rays cash in on their first opportunity. Well, a mistake out over the plate, and Evan Longoria. That ball gets to the spot that he wants it, and that's a rollover to shortstop to end the inning. That ball leaked across the plate a little bit. Evans able to hit it hard and squeeze it in the hole. Plating the Rays' first run. Evan aboard for James Loney. And a good take by Loney on the fastball. One ball, no strikes. Up in the count. Loney fourth in the league and hitting overall. He's hitting 332. 319 against righties. He's been way more effective against lefties than righties, but there's nothing wrong with that 319 average against right handed pitching either. Cut the miss on a fastball. Two and one. Up the left side, that's going to slice foul. That was horrible effort on the ball boy. Horrible effort. And these guys are good. They're good. They make plays. This is not making plays. Come on. You can go get him now. And look, the review from the uh, bullpen, not good. Not good. And like I said, these guys are usually locked down defenders, but that was just horrifying effort. 
pitch foul back into the screen. A I mean, listen, at 96. It's the same with the game. I, you understand that plays are not always going to be made. That, that's the way it happens. You're human beings. But when you give me lack of effort, just have no tolerance for it. Well, you need to charge him a play like that. You what, can't just wait back. Go watch the old men in San Francisco. He, <laughs> they will do facials to come up with balls. They never take a play off. Swing and a miss. Loney chases that one and is out on strikes. The split got it. The Rays get a run. RBI single from Longoria. one nothing. Western night of uh, one sort or another. And the Rays have a uh, one nothing lead. And the uh, the ostrich. He'll be a pair of boots later. <laughs> well if they're white I'm buying them. Wait till you <laughs> see my outfit next year for Miami Dwayne. Oh really. Yeah. White ostrich. Boots. Yeah. You know well you know how it's the white trip. Yeah. Always the white trip. Uh huh. Just check out the Guns N' Roses Paradise City video. Yeah. And Axl Rose's outfit in the That's first you? half of that video. Yeah. I will have that next year. With headband. No hair. Here, here's Matt Weeders, and the pitch is a strike. Jeremy Hellickson. On the hill with a one nothing lead facing Weeders. Weeders in his young career has been tough against the Rays. Hitting just 234 overall this year. But a very valuable member of this Baltimore lineup. For the job he does behind the plate but this guy also. Will drive in runs for them and give them good at bats. There's a long foul up the right side out of play. Yeah, he's one of those guys when you look at the average at 234, you disregard it because you know how dangerous he is and you know what he's capable of doing at any moment. You know, that batting average for a guy like Weeders, who's the catcher and does all the, he uh, performs for this team, that batting average is almost like. The earned run average for relief pitchers. Yeah. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, and he's a, you know, for a catcher, extremely tall. And with that swing from the right and the left side, he's able to create a tremendous amount of leverage. And that's why when he catches one clean, it will go. Two balls, two strikes. Ooh, pretty close right there. 
And the count is full. I think that's really important for Jeremy. I like when he goes to his fastball with two strikes. Really like that. He missed there, but you do that enough, and all of a sudden it's going to make that two strike changeup even more effective than it already is. On the full count, this is the fourth three ball count he's had already. And he strikes out Weeders. Had him out in front on the change. And I'm telling you, a lot of that has to do with the previous pitch. It was a ball, but Weeders saw a heater. 2 2, now 3 2. All of a sudden you come with a changeup that that ball is off the plate, but in order to protect, Weeders sees it up in the zone, gets it started, and it's just not there yet. Yeah, that's the Bugs Bunny element of his changeup. That's exactly right. Just never gets there. The hitter sees it nice and big. They want to take a rip at it. Looks just like the fastball. The arm speed's the same. Ball doesn't travel. J.J. Hardy misses a fastball. Hardy 0 for 3 last night. He was the last man that Chris Archer retired in the seventh inning, completing Archer's stint last night. Chris retired 13 of the last 14 that he faced. Hardy skies it into the outfield where Desmond Jennings waits in center. So two outs. Hey kids, if you're looking for something fun to do this summer, come play with the Rays play at the Rays Summer Baseball Camp. You can create your own moments by hitting at home plate like Evan Longoria or pitching from the mound like Matt Moore. To register, go to RaysBaseball.com slash camps. It's Chris Dickerson. The Orioles going with their exact same lineup as last night. Dickerson was 0 for 2. He walked in the third and scored the only run for Baltimore last night. It was a first pitch strike. And I think Buck Showalter's thinking uh, this group right here is better than one run. The problem is they ran into you just talking about Chris Archer and he was tremendous. One and one. Yeah, the hard luck loser right there. Jason Hamill threw a good ball game, missed that one pitch out over the plate to Desmond Jennings, and he waylaid that ball deep into center field. Yeah, Hamill gave up the two runs in six and two thirds. Went into the seventh, leading one to nothing. And after the base hit to Loney, Jennings hit the home run to center. Oh. The strike at the knees, and boy, Jennings really clobbered that shot to center field. You know, he talked about. Jennings being dropped in the lineup and what he's done and he has sprayed the ball around. He's 11 out of 32 in that stretch. Four hits to left. Four to right and three to center. And not one better than the one he hit off the glass. In center field. Very rare. Do you have a no doubter to center field. Dickerson out on strikes. Two strikeouts in the inning. Bottom of the second coming one nothing Tampa Bay.
We go to the bottom of the second, the raise up one nothing. And how about last night, the Chris Archer show? Now I do some interacting with fans on our Twitter account at Sunsports Rays, and they all love them some Archer, and I am quickly finding out why. Archer sent them this tweet of appreciation last night. Rays fans, thank you. You guys are loyal, positive, and sincere. Appreciated. Dwayne BA, were you surprised at just how well he pitched yesterday? Uh, the, the direct answer to that is no. No. Uh, you love this kid's arm and you love his makeup as much as uh, as you like the arm. He has to be so young. You know, we're talking about Machado and how mature he is. The same thing applies to Archer. He has more than an idea. Yeah, yes, he does. And I'll tell you what, he's going to, I think, as you start to see him with regularity, he's going to become more and more like Matt Moore, which is when they're in the zone, it's going to be a long night for the offense. That's just the way it goes. When Matt Moore, the only time that he struggles in, the, in like his last start is when he hurts himself with the walks and the bad counts. The same thing with Archer. Well, the, the thing you like about Moore and, and what we've seen of Archer and been exposed to him, uh, Matt doesn't make any excuses. He's yeah. all about accountability. He'll take it himself. He'll take it on himself. And so will Archer. He's shown that, si that same kind of makeup, which is really... Impressive in a young pitcher, young that, player, young person, young person in general. That's right. That, yeah, you, that applies to all of life. Yep. When you're accountable, you can get better. You can improve your situation if you're accountable. If it's you're not always blaming it on somebody else. How or, about those three young guys here? Hey, How listen, about that you lights out. More and Archer and Cobb. It Cobb's another one. Yeah, Cobb's oh. another one. No excuses. Mm -hmm. Is just going to go out and pitch. I just I love when. They were asked up in Detroit. There was that article that was written in the paper about pitch counts. And obviously oh, this is yeah, a, a, an organization that. that, yeah, they're going to manage pitches. But they, they asked Alex about it. Well, they had comments from Denny McLean and yeah. Nicky Lolich about yeah. pitch counts and all of that that we uh, are subjected to here in the, the modern era. They didn't like them. And, and you're right. Cobb's answer was right to the point. No, I don't like them. Yeah. No, and, and he said, he said, listen, I understand that that's what we do here with the Rays, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut and do my job, but you're asking my opinion, I'm going to give it to you, and I think they stink. I love that. I love that about him. He's one of those guys that goes out there, and he's thinking CG every time he goes to the mound. And all three of those guys in that shot that we just had there are self-critical, which is great. Uh, that, that comes with accountability. Uh, they'll go over... The, their performance, their yeah. last outing. And they'll be very critical of themselves. Honest self evaluators. All four, Scott draws the walk on the heels of the Jennings strikeout. But that's the only way you're going to make progress. You've got to be able to do that, take a realistic assessment of, of what you've been doing, and then improve upon it. And they're gifted with great ability to begin with. They have a healthy appreciation for that. And the attempt to make it better. How about the guy in the far left? Add him to the mix. Yeah, and uh, it'd be nice to see him back. I, the, the word we're hearing that maybe three rehab assignments in the uh, minor leagues for uh, David Price, which would put him uh, late June, maybe sometime in early July. Boy, I... I mean, you miss that in the rotation. Yeah, there, there's there's cautious, cautiousness, and then there's how David Price is being handled right now. I'll tell you what, he looked good in the bullpen yesterday. Said he threw all of his pitches and felt outstanding. But, you know, he has been. I think it was yesterday it was 22 days before he had been off the mound. Mm -hmm. and, and taking 22 days off. You can have a nice bullpen session, but you're going to need, you know, at least one more, maybe another one. Yeah, you're gonna and then you are going to build up endurance right. nothing else. And so you understand why they're thinking, you know, multiple rehab starts. you got to get that endurance built back up, the pitch count built back up. Three weeks is a long time to take off for a pitcher. One and one to count to Jose Lobatone. Big cut. Ball and two strikes. Runner at first is Luke Scott with one out. The Rays got a run at the first, but Longoria singled home Ben Zobris. 
Well, the one thing that you want to do, though, and that you have to do in the David Price situation is when he comes back, he's back for good. You, you, you're not going to rush it by a couple of days. It's going to be when he's back, he's back. You know, that's one thing the Rays have, through the years, really done a great job of. You know, there's a temptation to maybe get a guy back too soon. Same thing about bringing players up from the minor leagues. They will not rush that process, and they certainly have not rushed it with Price here and his time on the DL. And you know where I think they learned the lesson? Last year with Longoria. Mm -hmm. Well, is going to drop it in there for a base hit. Jones with the pickup. Scott goes to second, and Jose Lobaton has a single. Oh, another little reach swing by a raise hitter, and they flutter one out into the outfield that nobody can get to. And, of course, Luke Scott had to hold up because he didn't know if this ball was going to be caught. So he's got to hold his ground. You're thinking, boy, that should be caught. Should be. Wasn't. You know, that's certainly not a screaming line drive, but a base hit like that helps to build a hitter's confidence, strangely enough. You know, you don't square it up. You don't hit it that hard. But we've really seen the confidence in Jose Lobatone uh, just take great strides. All in, in his whole game. Mm -hmm. I mean, out, you know, obviously in the batter's box, behind the plate. You can see the work that he's put in and receiving and blocking and being active back there. Escobar takes a fastball for a strike. Escobar's average at 242 on the strength of a good run almost a month now. He's hit over 300. Last 25 games, 322. Line drive base hit into center. Scott's on his way to the plate. Jones throw up the line a bit. Safe at the plate for Scott. And the Rays lead 2-0. Scott scores from second. Lobaton to third on the RBI single from Escobar. Now that was a nice job by Escobar to stay on that slider from Gaussman. Did not quite have the depth that he maybe would have liked. But Escobar stays right on it. Follows it out there. Gets it off the end of the bat. But... See how long he stays on that pitch. Hits that ball right back up the middle to extend the Rays lead and get that runner to third. We've got Jose Lobaton hustling all the way. Goes all the way to third on that. First to third with a run home. Rick Adair, the pitching coach, spending some time with the young right-hander. In the game this evening, it all stays at long. Tires plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Forty pitches so far for Gaussman. Matt Joyce, the top of the order, about to step in. Two men on with one out. out pitcher first his first time singled and walked in last night's game first pitch is a strike Baltimore right hander starting with the off speed pitch a change up there Fastball and Joyce late. It ran out of bat too. That ball had a, a lot of run on it. Not sink, but actual run. 94, and that jump ball shot off the plate. Looked like a left handed cutter. Catch up to it. Ball not fouled high enough to give him a chance to get over there. Uh, and you know who was closer to that? It, Weeders had a better shot at that than Machado. Can't find it. 
We see so many visiting teams come in here and have trouble locating the ball when it goes up into the air. And Joyce tries to lay off, but he went around and Joyce is out on strikes. Well, after they got Matt Joyce to swing and miss at that 94 mile an hour heater, they just continued to go further and further off the plate. Look where that split goes. Set up away and catches it even further away. It's in the other batter's box. You know, you you can see Gaussman stuff here. 96 on the velocity. We've seen the change anywhere from 80 to 86. So you got that you throw in the slider and to this point you can see a, a young pitcher and his challenge now is harnessing all that. Yeah well and, and learning how to use it how to set guys up. That's the biggest thing at this level. You can take that kind of stuff at the minor leagues even the triple A. Base hit to left by Zobris on a first pitch fastball. Lobatone scores and the Rays lead three to nothing. Well, ben didn't waste any time this time. The Rays have two here in the second inning. Well, he had seen him and had an extended at bat in his first time up. So he goes right here after the fastball. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Shoot it the other way. And the Rays just continue to add pressure. Kelly Johnson struck out his first time. And on with two men out. No ball, no strikes. So the Rays with a run in the first. They have two home in the second inning. You know, we were talking about Gaussman with his stuff. He, he, even at the AAA level, you, you can overpower guys with that stuff and just out stuff them. You get to the big leagues, you better learn how to pitch. You better learn how to set things up, move the ball around. And that's what he's learning now. Uh, hitters at the major league level are going to be a lot more disciplined yeah. than they are down below and, and that's a major difference and they have plans the scouting reports are better that's why you know getting to the big leagues is a great thrill for any young player staying in the big leagues is the challenge yeah. because all the secrets are out now so you know how many times you see a guy come up and just tear up the league first time through all of a sudden oh okay there's the weakness here we can okay they start exploiting that and before you know it, the guy's hitting buck 80 and he's getting sent back down. That's what makes it so difficult up here and to have a, a, a long lengthy career. Into left. McLeod almost overran that. He started to come in and had to veer to his right and hold up. Rays come up with two more and lead three nothing. Rays have taken an early 3-0 lead as we go to the third time for the AT&T social media poll. 
in Rays history, who would be the best defensive first baseman? TB1, Travis Lee. TB2, Carlos Pena. TB3, Casey Kotchman. And TB4, the current incumbent, James Loney. Well, we've seen Loney for about a third of the season. He's been pretty impressive to this point. Uh, yeah, the Rays have been blessed with some tremendous defensive first baseman, but you know, James Loney, what he's been able to do, my goodness. And then you, you, on top of that, you talk about his throwing arm and the accuracy of the throwing arm. I love that play that he made in Detroit mm -hmm. on the bunt where yep. he had said you know, he had the internal clock going. Like, if this ball got laid down, if I get to it in a certain number of steps, I'm getting that guy at second. Yep. And he got to that ball, didn't even hardly have time to look. Picked that ball up, turned, and fired a bullet to second base right on the money. I mean, a quarter of a step he got him by. Well, as good as he is with that mid at first base, what Joe Madden loves about him is his throwing ability. And he's, he's he was fearless to make that play. Yes. But you've got to be in tune with what's going on right there. And, boy, he was right on the money. And know where you are in the field. You, know, you have to have a field. You're charging a bunt. And second base is now behind you to the right. And you just turn and fire it there. Clarity out the front. That's three strikeouts of the last four hitters for Hellickson. Great change up here right out over the plate. Flaherty way out in front. Well, how about the, the uh, when turning the double play, too? How about when he'll get a ground ball hit to him, and he just turns and flutters one out over the bag, knowing that Escobar's covering. It's like he's leading him, like a quarterback. Just flutter one over the middle. Doesn't wait for him to get to the bag or close. He just turns and throws. Nate McLeod takes the ball. You do stuff like that, you'd better be in sync with your teammates. He obviously knows their every move. So that's when it's fun to watch. You know, it's one thing to have a great first baseman over there and give the rest of the infield a confidence to make a throw knowing that he's going to come up with it. And it's still another step when he is in sync with the rest of the infield to make those kind of throws that he's made to second base. Well, that was an area. I mean, listen, defense has been stressed here since Joe Madden you know, has come over pitching in defense last year that defense struggled a little bit so that was reprioritized where they've gotten it right. Loney takes this one unassisted on the roller. Two up two down. So the bases are empty with Manny Machado approaching the plate. Red Sox are not going down easily. The Angels scored two in the top of the ninth inning to make it a nine to two game, but the Red Sox have scored three. It's now nine to five. That's the first game of a doubleheader. One and all the count. Angels over the Red Sox, bottom of the ninth. Red Sox with a couple men in scoring position. And two outs in the inning. With Jacoby Oldsbury hitting. That's a strike. One and two. Hellickson trying to have a clean one two three inning to follow up a one two three second. And a ground ball to short off the change. Escobar's throw is right there. One two three go the Orioles. Home half of inning three coming three nothing Tampa Bay.
We enter the bottom half of the third inning. Rays leading three to nothing. The game in Boston just concluded while we were in commercial break, and the Angels did hold on to win that game. Ernesto Frieri came on for the save. Things got a little scary at the end, but the Angels win the opener of the day-night doubleheader, nine to five. Don't forget the Red Sox and Angels are playing with a normal 25-man roster. Day-night doubleheader didn't have enough advanced warning to add the extra player. In that first game, Boston used three relievers, Franklin Morales, Clayton Mortensen, Andrew Miller. They only threw three innings, but they threw 87 total pitches as the Angels got to the Red Sox bullpen. There you see, guys, things getting bunched up in the AL East. Well, it's got a chance to get that much closer. Evan Longoria taking a big rip at that opening fastball, fouling it back. That's a strike. Loney next, and then Jennings. One one count. Two balls and a strike. Now the Red Sox, because of that double header. Have had to juggle their rotation. Three and one. So it would appear the Rays with the, the Red Sox due to come in here. The Rays will miss a Buckholtz, which is not a bad idea. He's going to pitch the second game of that doubleheader. Dubrant was the losing pitcher. In that 9 5 final, the Angels over the Red Sox. So Dubron will not pitch here. Buckholtz will not pitch here. Dempster, I think, is supposed to pitch tomorrow. Longoria is out on strikes. A little extra from the right hander there. 97. 97, but below the zone. You very rarely see. Evan Longoria chase, especially a fastball, out of the zone. I think that he was just so geared up for the heater. Had a couple of good swings at the fastball. Just got a little bit out of his game right there on that swing. Here's James Loney. This pitch is a strike. He's got a run in the first on an RBI single from Longoria. Two runs in the second with Escobar and Zobrist driving in the runs. There's a shot back into left. McLeod backs up, not yet to the track. Two gone. Gaussman made his major league debut. Back on the 23rd of May on the road against the Blue Jays pitched five innings of that one gave up four runs and took the loss. He was down 4 3 when he left and that's wound up being a 12 6 final. Then he lost a 9 3 decision in Washington. No decision the last time out against the Tigers. That was in Baltimore. One and all the count to Desmond. To strike Desmond, the difference maker last night, jumped on the first pitch he saw and they had bad in the seventh. And boy, did he thrill that one! Well, like we said, that very rarely do you get a no doubter to center field. You saw the reaction of Jason Hamill, he knew it was gone. Adam Jones took about two steps and then he just turned around to watch it. That ball was loud, struck extremely well to the deepest part of this field. Well, let's take a look at that. Toyota trend the spray chart for him those 11 hits well spread but four to right field and then that gargantuan shot to center field last night four to left four to right three hits to center he's out on strikes the split got him 
We're through three, and the Rays lead three nothing. Sun Sports tonight brought to you by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel efficient Hondas. And by Checkers, feast on. Rays in the Orioles, middle game of their three game series. Rays have taken an early 3 0 lead. On to the fourth we go. Jeremy Hellickson is retired seven in a row. He'll face Marcakis, Jones, and Davis in the fourth. Yeah. Oh. Pitch is strike one. You know, Jeremy gets on these runs, and we see it just about every game. I mean, even if it's a game where he doesn't like the final line, he's got a run in there somewhere of seven in a row, mm -hmm. eight out of nine. He does it so quietly and efficiently. You, you, you check your scorebook, like, really? Seven in a row? And he just goes out and starts making pitches. High fly ball back into deep right. Joyce to the track. He's going to have room and makes the catch. Actually came back on the turf to make the grab. And Marcakis is out number one in the fourth. Yeah, he's done that even in some games when he's given up a bunch of runs. They seem to happen in one inning. Yeah, maybe spread over a couple innings and the rest of the way, you know, he's retiring 16 in a row. Great stretches like that. That's why you're so encouraged that he's going to turn it around and get on a, a consistent run because you see it just about every game. Cold oh. ball to start Jones. He takes that for a strike. His curveball has been a good pitch for him. This ball game, using it against the righties and the lefties. Jones chasing that one out in front. 0 2. Well, you have to figure that Hellickson, uh, given his record and his makeup, he'll figure it out. He's better than five and a half runs a game. ZRA 559 coming into this one. And here's the thing about that. If this Rays offense is for real, and it seems as if it is, and Joe Madden certainly thinks so, he thinks it could be even better. Your earned run average doesn't have to be two and a half. It doesn't even have to be three and a half to be successful. I mean, this this team's scoring some runs now. That's right. Well, the thing is, is that these pitchers are capable of throwing up those kind of numbers, but you don't have to do it each and every time. Yep. 
know, there were times even last year where the, the starting pitcher and, and we saw the same thing with you know the Miami Marlins mm -hmm. and they can run out great starting pitching doesn't matter they don't get any run support at all it makes it difficult to win games to get onto winning streaks but now with this pitching staff what's happening in the bullpen yeah things are looking a lot better in that bullpen I mean think about that you know we, we, Jake McGee his last 10 11 appearances have been off the charts good you, you know, Joel Peralta just Mr. Consistent takes the ball all the time, pitches just about every day. He continues to get the job done. And now Fernando Rodney has put together a string of performances. And I thought last night was huge for him. You know, with a one run lead facing the heart of this order and two strikeouts, one, two, three inning, nine pitches, eight strikes. Chopper to short. Escobar fires a strike. To first base. Two up, two down here in the fourth inning. Bring your favorite four legged friend out to the ballpark Sunday, June 16th. Purchase a seat in the TBT party deck for you and your dog and get a raise leash. Tickets limited, so get yours today. Visit raisebaseball.com slash bark in the park. I'm going to bring Lizzie to the booth. Then you'll get a free leash. Yeah. Okay. She'll sit right here the whole game. That's the 16th. Circle. 16, yep. Female Rottweiler in the booth. It's Chris Davis. Pitch is down. I, get, I guarantee you one thing we won't get any unannounced drop bys. <laughs> that much I can assure you. Instant security. Instant. <laughs> Do the whole game with the booth door open. Fine. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Davis almost wound up and he took a cut at that pitch. Of course, that's the way he swings. He got a big bat and he will swing it. It's a, it's a big swing. It's a smooth swing. Look at those numbers. Body. Two balls and a strike. And Jeremy has not been shy about coming in off the plate to Davis either. You know, he's trying to make that pitch in, but he's also saying to himself, look, if you're going to miss, you better miss off. Don't miss out over. Mm -hmm. Those end up souvenirs in the stands. I foul the other way. Well, it would seem to me, B.A., here's a guy, number one, his power is imposing, but, you know, he covers the plate. Mm -hmm. So where else are you going to go but in, really? Because you leave something out over the plate, and, and we've seen he'll hit it to left field, or yeah. he'll hit it a mile to right or to center. Two and two now. And a swing. And a miss. He's out on strikes. He threw him a curveball. Strikes him out. Another one, two, three inning. That's ten in a row. Retired by Hellickson. Three nothing Rays.
Bottom of the fourth. Coming up, Rays lead 3-0. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to filler time later in this evening's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Great baseball combination right there. Rays will have the bottom three in the order, starting with the designated hitter, Luke Scott, coming up, then Jose Lobatone and Yanel Escobar. I'll tell you what, that combination, too, in between innings, makes yeah. doing the games a whole lot more fun, too. Sure does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready for the concert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Luke walked with one out in the second inning and scored on a base hit by Yanel Escobar. The pitch is sky right back down the middle into center field. Adam Jones turned around a couple different ways there after that one. Not the most direct route, but he did get there. It was effective. <laughs> Not pretty, but effective. Luke Scott going right back up the middle with that ball. Just missed it. He knows it. Jose Lobatone. Want to know? One and one, a foul ball. Tone dropping a base hit in the center and the Rays turned that into a run in the second. Inside. 2-1. Rays now 33 and 27. They won nine of their last 12. Starting the day three and a half back. Right now they're three back. Red Sox dropping the first game of their doubleheader at Fenway to the Angels nine to five. Line drive down to third, grabbed by Machado, and Lobatone is out number two. Th that's why the last hit that he had where he floated that ball out into right center, that's why you take those. Because all of a sudden now you do a real good job of two-strike hitting, taking a ball down and away and hitting a laser the other way, just like you're taught right at the third baseman. I'll tell you, Lobatone has really made some great strides uh, as a hitter, yeah. too. And that's a good example of it right there. That's it. That's exactly right. Two strikes, a good pitcher's pitch down and away. And he laces one the other way, but right at the guy. I'll tell you, what he's done in the last month, month and a half. There's Escobar shooting a base hit through the right side and into right. Lobatone has really taken some steps forward. And receiving the ball and doing the catching and swinging the bat the way he has. He's carving out some significant major league time for himself. Yes, he is. And you can see the Jose Molina influence the way that he receives, trying to keep the glove in the zone, the way that he's blocking balls, trying to buy pitches, buy strikes for his pitchers. And then, yeah, anything that he's going to give you offensively is just bonus. And he's been tightening up that end of things, too. Here's Matt Joyce. Matt looking for his first hit tonight. Nothing of two, and the shift is on for him. It's away. Gaussman, the right-hander, out of LSU on the hill. 
making his fourth major league start. He's given up 20 hits in 15 innings coming into this game, 0 and 2. And the Rays have three runs, six hits so far tonight. Minor in the right, and the shift will get him. Flaherty makes the catch. On to the fifth inning. 3 0 Tampa Bay. We enter the fifth inning. The Rays and Jeremy Hellickson with a 3 0 lead in this game. And his last start in Cleveland wasn't his longest of the year, but he felt like there were some building blocks in that start. You know, I think I had a pretty good change up last game. And, you know, I think that was, you know, because I was keeping my, my fastball down and, um, you know, on the corner for the most part. You know, like I said, I left a few balls over the plate there in the, in the third, but you know, I thought for the most part, you know, I was where I wanted to be. Five innings of work, and Joe Madden keeps preaching the fastball down, and Hellickson felt like that was pretty good last time, guys. Well, it worked out pretty well last night, or the last time out, and again tonight, things working out well for him. Yeah, he, he's throwing the ball tremendous here tonight. I, I thought that last start, too, that, that big moment for him in the fifth inning was huge because you know, Jeremy Hellickson has had you know, some trouble with holding on to leads, and the Rays gave him a four to nothing lead into that game. The Indians had closed that within four to three, and then he found himself in the fifth inning. A couple, you know, he gets a, a quick out, a couple of back to back base hits, and all of a sudden you got Nick Swisher, Mark Reynolds coming to the plate with runners on first and second. And boy, did he make some big pitches and retire those two guys easily in what would be his final inning. But I thought that was a big, big moment for him. Yeah, and he really needed something like that to uh, uh, to get him back in sync and believing in himself as good as you are and he's been good for the race very good but you go through what he has his uh, batting average against with runners in scoring position not good uh, even more troubling with two outs his earned run average with the lead over eight so you need something like that to help turn it around and that's a that's a good point you make that point in that game might be the turnaround of his season. I think about it if just one base hit, a blue broken bat base hit. Let's say the Rays win that game 11 to 4, but his line ends up five innings, 10 hits, four earned runs, and a no decision. Yep. He's going to feel a lot worse mm -hmm. than he is with just one less hit, one less run, and getting a win yep. and pitching in that big spot. That was a big spot. Nick Swisher, you know, it was having a nice series as far as being very selective. He was seeing the ball well. Of course, Mark Reynolds has done a lot of damage up there for Cleveland this year, and he made two big pitches and got two easy outs on those guys. Two two. Readers just a little bit of that one and foul. The changeup had him just a little bit out front and over that pitch. 
So 10 in a row right now retired by Hellickson since he gave up that base hit. Adam Jones singles in the first by Machado and Jones. That's been it. Four strikeouts, no walks. And again, the 2 2 pitch on its way. Here we go three balls, two strikes. Fastball in. He stays alive. American League East matchup here the Rays and the Orioles. Joe Madden and Buck Showalter matching up. Three two hit on the ground and through the shift just to the right of Loney and the left of Zobris. That's the only place he could hit that ball to the right side between those two guys and get it through. I want to see how Joe Madden defends him next time. You see right there Loney with the dive and then Ben Zobris who's deep and he's deep because it gives him more opportunity to get the balls more ground to cover and still he's able to squeeze it through. Yeah, there, there's one line you could draw to the outfield where that ball is not going to be fielded, and that was the exact line. Wow. Well, that's really beating the shift. Making a mockery of the shift, I would say. J.J. Hardy. Either that or just like going to the, the window with your, with your eyes closed and betting on whatever horse that you randomly picked. I've heard of guys doing that and being quite successful. Yeah, I've seen a couple guys. Yeah. I, I saw them too. <laughs> two and oh. Not that either one of us would do that, but we have seen people do that. Listen, I'm no angel. But games of chance are not my thing. I've got no time for it. None. None. Line drive, base hit, and the left. Johnson backhands toward the line, and now two men on here in the fifth inning. So a couple of base hits to open the fifth. Helixson finds himself in a little bit of a spot. With this three run lead. Longoria and Lobatone out there on the mound with him. Now Jose Lobatone coming out here to ask Jeremy, what do you want to do with Dickerson and what signs are we going to go with? Runner on second base now. Make sure all the ducks are in a row. Only the second time tonight, the Orioles have had a man as far as second base. The other time back in the first when Machado singled and then moved to third on the infield hit by Jones. So Weeders at second, Hardy at first. And here's Chris Dickerson. Strike. The one thing the Rays want to do is break any kind of momentum that the Orioles can try to mount here in the fifth inning. Starting on that base hit that saw its way through the right side of the ship. You know what the best way to do to, to stop that momentum? Quality pitches by Jeremy Hellickson. Get right out of this mess. One and one. Hellickson making his 14th career start against the Orioles, his 15th overall appearance. 
seven and three against them with a 331 earned run average. A 1 1 count on Dickerson. Outside. Two balls and a strike. This is where Jeremy needs to make a pitch two and one and this is where having that good change up helps him out whether he uses it here or not. It's got to be something that you account for. And just off the plate in and you saw a little flinch back there from Lance Barksdale. We well, almost like he wanted to call this is close. Boy, that is extremely close. Well, you think it'd have to have a little bit of the corner. <laughs> I thought I saw a smidge. <laughs> Three one right now. And we'll go full. Fastball fouled out of play. How about that? I mean, and that's you know because Jeremy's changeup has been so good tonight. He can throw a 3 1 fastball. That ball was out over the plate right in the swing plane of Dickerson, but still a little bit tardy on it. At just 92 miles an hour. And now he can do whatever he wants. That changeup's been good enough. You can float that thing in there right now. Three balls, two strikes. Ellickson's pitch. Dickerson swings and he misses. He struck him out on a 3 2 changeup. No reason not to. That pitch has been A plus tonight for Jeremy. So 3 2, go ahead. It wasn't even in the best spot, but the arm action, everything else, he tried to stay back on it, just couldn't do it. When you saw two and Dickerson walked by Marksdale, he turned around, looked at him, and said, Up. And he's thinking, You know what? I think I chased. Ryan Flaherty, the second baseman. Pitch misses low, fastball. The Hellickson struck him out in the third. Got ahead of him, 0 2. Struck him out with a change up. Here missing on a couple fastballs. Two balls, no strikes. Jeremy trying to pitch around a couple of opening base hits. Foul ball. What a weapon. 2 0 change. What a weapon. I mean, that, that, that right there. It's so difficult. And everybody on that Baltimore Oriole bench sees that. They see that. The, you know, the guy's not predictable 2 0. 2 0, you're thinking, you got to throw a fastball here. I and mean, even if it's well located, you got to throw one. Those are 2 0 change. Now will he do it again? That's what you got to ask yourself if you're that man. And if you're that ball, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Two one, round ball to first. Loney still on the money to second. Back to first. Hellickson looking for the bag. Safe the call. Weeders goes to third. Hardy forced at second. Ray's looking for the double play there. Well, Loney's going to get it started. And Jeremy Hellickson, that's a tough play for a pitcher. Ground ball to the right side. You got to be breaking right off the bat and try to get to the bag as quick as you can. Because if you find yourself feeling for it, reaching or looking down, a lot of times you're just a hair late. He catches it. He's there in time. And as he looks down, you see the foot of Flaherty get in there. That's a good call. It was the right call. But that's how bang, bang it is. That's a tough play when you're a pitcher on the move trying to catch that ball and find the bag at the same time. Two outs with men on the corners, first and third. Nate McLeod, 
the new hitter. And he starts him with a curveball. And it's in there for a strike call. His off speed have been above reproach tonight. Curveball's been good in the limited times that he's used it. The changeup's been outstanding. McLeod with a fly ball to center. Ground out to Loney unassisted. Fly ball not too deep to left. That's Johnson and Hellickson pitches his way out of the jam. Two men left. Bottom of the fifth coming. Three nothing Rays. Fernando Rodney much more accommodating there than he was to the Baltimore hitters last night in the ninth inning. Time now for the Just for Men Auto Stop foolproof stat. Last three times out that fastball averaging a tick over 97 and the changeup 84.4. His command overall has been much better lately. That has been the key. Fernando Rodney that command that's what separated him last year that's what separated him last night keep that fastball in the zone it makes the change up so much better and he just went right through the Baltimore Orioles the middle of that lineup Marquez, Jones and Davis two punch outs nine pitches eight out of the nine strikes looking good A little leisure time in the bullpen in the middle of the game for the closer. I don't know if I've seen that before. <laughs> the, the autograph session in game. Ben Zobris leads off and he hammers this one deep into center field. That's got carry and will bounce off the wall. Into second base goes Zobris with a two base hit. His third hit tonight. Well, he had a fastball to drive in a run in the second inning and Hits this one off the center field wall. What a night Ben Sobers is having. Takes advantage of that mistake right there, but look at his first at bat. A 3 2 breaking ball he had never seen from a pitcher he'd never seen before. He reaches out, keeps his hands in the zone, flips it into right field for a double, goes the other way his last time up to drive in a run, and then just absolutely blisters that ball off the wall out there in right center. Locked in. Scoring threat. With the leadoff two base hit for the middle of the order now. And it's 14th double of the year. Kelly Johnson in the batter's box. Rays picked up a run in the first, two more in the second. Now another chance. Oh. 
ball no strikes well the Rays have been so good with runners in scoring position they came in hitting 257 as a team 299 with men in scoring position and Johnson lifts it foul out of play Kelly back in the lineup here in this series after missing a couple games in Detroit with some back stiffness Rays now at 301, three for six tonight with men in scoring position. And a fly ball center field. Jones will catch it, tagged by Zobris. He's on his way to third and arrives ahead of the throw. Heady base running by Ben Zobris. That's a line drive to Adam Jones, who's got a very strong arm out there in center field, but Ben realizes that Adam is moving to his left, taking him away from third base. So he's going to see once this ball, okay, it's going to be caught. Look at it, he's moving to his left. It's going to be too difficult of a throw. Take advantage, get over to third with less than two outs. That's big. Now Evan Longoria with a chance to add to the lead. Field up a bit for the Orioles. The pitch inside. Chato stays back at third. Sort of angled across the infield with Hardy and a few steps closer on the right side. Flaherty and Davis. One and one here to Evan. Well, Manny Machado has seen Evan swings today. Says there's no way I'm coming in and playing even with the bag. He already ripped a bullet in between short and third. It's first time up to drive in a run. One and two. Boy, that one dropped out of sight. Yeah, it did. He's got a good. Splitter right there and Evan, you know, he struck out his last at bat going out of the zone below the zone Going after a fastball the last two swings right there off the split Two balls two strikes I'll tell you that pitch the prior pitch at 89 we, we've seen a great Variety in yeah. terms of velocity with uh, his his changeup split. Yeah, he really has run the gamut with that pitch. Inside fastball, now that one up at 97. Three two here. Chase set up runners at first and third with one out for James Loney. Texas and Toronto now moving to the top of the 16th, tied at three. And the Marlins and the Mets in New York, top of the 14th, tied 1 1. Struck out and lifted a fly ball into left. Foul back, strike one. Ray start to get a little action in their bullpen up the right field line. Alex Torres, who's been so good, listening.
last ball out of play to the opposite side. Three runs, seven hits for the Rays. No runs, four hits for Baltimore. Loney takes it down. One and two. Kevin Gaussman. Right hander on the hill. Rays getting their first look at the 22 year old pitcher. And a soft fly ball center field got a fall in front of Jones. Here comes Zobris in to score. Longoria arriving before the throw at second as the Rays make it a four to nothing game. Loney putting it into play and drops a base hit in front of Jones. Well, that's what Joe Madden is talking about when you're able to put innings together because of not striking out. And this is a pitch right here. A lot of guys would punch out on that split with two strikes, but you see Loney just doing what he can to put the ball in play, and it works out huge for the Rays. Base hit and a run. Driven in. Well, the Rays got that run on the advance by Zobris from second to third. Yeah, put him right. in a great spot. You're absolutely right, Dwayne, because if he's in second right there, not knowing if Adam Jones is going to catch that, best case is he, you know, he's a third right now. 33rd run batted in for Loney. Desmond Jennings. The pitch is a strike. Desmond twice has struck out looking in the second swinging at the change up in the third took a healthy fastball for a strike in the fifth here. It's one and one. Eighty seven pitches on the night for Gaussman. DJ McFarland the lefty up in the bullpen. Two and one. And we're going to get a visit to the mound by the pitching coach, Rick Adair. Well, they talk it over. We'll check in with Todd Callis. Todd, what do you have? Dwayne, we were wondering if any local product was going to be drafted by the Rays today, rounds 11 through 40. And sure enough, Dalton Martinez, the son of Rays bench coach Davey Martinez, center fielder out of Dunedin High School, is selected it with the Rays 31st pick just a few minutes ago. So congratulations to Davey, to Dalton, and the whole Martinez group, guys. Yeah, you don't get much more local than that. Davey Martinez, son Dalton. You know, and they're Dalton 5'11, 165 pounds. I'm not sure Davey was that big when he got to the big leagues with the Cubs. I think you're right. He and Jamie Boyer came up on the same day with the Cubs. And they arrived the day that the, the manager of the Cubs, Jim Fry, was fired. Nice first day. <laughs> it really was. Two young kids arriving. And uh, you know what that's like. That's a big deal. And they sort of closed the clubhouse. They wouldn't let them in. They, they didn't want the young players exposed to all that. So they closed the clubhouse. And Jamie and Davey thought that uh, because they'd been called up, Maybe the players were mad at them because they'd replaced two veteran guys on the team. They said, look, they were they were sitting essentially on their suitcases outside the clubhouse door thinking, hey, the rest of the team, they're mad at us. They, we haven't even seen them. They, they don't like us already. But it was really because of what was happening with the manager. Well, a pitching change here with a walk to Desmond Jennings. Metro PCS call to the bullpen.
This is why Tropicana Field is a dome. It's raining outside. Nice and comfy inside. Dancing on the dugouts. Let's go back to the rain. T.J. McFarland, the new pitcher. Bases loaded with a run home. One out in the fifth. 14th appearance for McFarland, who wears number 66. Luke Scott up here. And the first pitch is a strike. Chance here for the Rays to really blow this game open. One out, bases loaded. Luke Scott, who is due at the plate, has done a nice job against lefties this year. Look at those splits. Not what you'd expect. Fouled out of play. And Luke changed bats. Remember that fly ball to center field. Mm -hmm. Black bat. Yep. He tossed that aside, said, You've got nothing in you. Well, he did walk and score a run in the second inning, but it has been a difficult stretch for him recently. Waiting for him to get hot because he gets on one of those hot streaks. He'll be as hot as he's been cold. Fouls that one. Count still two strikes. one into the right field corner. Well, he stayed with it, got a breaking ball, and stayed on it enough. Very similar to what Ben Sobers did early in the game. Stay on the breaking ball and just flips it down into the corner. Did a good job of base running, too, because when he saw that there was going to be an attempt at a play at the plate, watch him look back right here. Where's that ball at? I'm going to keep going to third if they throw it home. Here's Jose Lobatone hitting one deep into left center. That's going to be in there for extra bases. Scott trots home on the double by Lobatone. And the Rays have indeed broken this one open. That makes it 8 0. Big smile on Jose Lobatone's face. Just that quickly. And again, the Rays have put together a huge inning on the verge of batting around again. Something they've done frequently this year. Well, this offense has been fun to watch. Man, when they get it rolling, everybody gets involved. Well, it's big for that guy right there. Well, are you happy to see that for Luke? <laughs> he's kept a pretty good attitude during this stretch, and that's not easy to do. But he's broken out of it with a walk, a run scored, a triple, driving in three, and now he's scored another run. That's why I'm upset about the black bat being gone because I ran into him today coming yes. into the park and he said listen all those home runs that you didn't give up during your career do something with my bat here and 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 get me where I need to go and so I performed a little ritual on the black bat and he wanted no part of it. Well you kissed it goodbye. I did kiss it goodbye. You got rid of it. I did. And now this bat that he used here in the fifth doubles in three triples in three and he scores a run a little chop by the mound. Flaherty with the pickup and the throw. Lobatone goes to third. In a backhanded way. Yeah. Yeah. I frustrated him enough with the black bat that he went to the one that really had the hits in it, mm -hmm. and he got the big one. It all works out. I just high five myself. Things happen for a reason, see? There you go. Yep. 
You can't help but help people. It's just your nature. Bad choice. We need to spend the weekend together. Let's see. <laughs> uh, we'll draw the line there. <laughs> One and all to count. Guys trip. Road trip. <laughs> we'll pile up the dog. She's coming up here. Yeah. We'll just go see America. Okay. Well, we might do that sooner than we want. Two balls, no strikes to count. It's starting to get weird up here, isn't it? <laughs> Eight runs, ten hits for the Rays. Meanwhile, back at the game. And the pitch is a strike at the knees. Two and one. Seven runs charged to the starting pitcher Gaussman in four to third. Last run here in the inning charged to McFarland, giving up a triple and a double. And Joyce out on strikes. The Rays send nine men to the plate. They have a very big inning. Capped on that triple by Luke Scott chasing home three. And the Rays score five, leading eight nothing. Rays hold an eight-nothing lead through five. Onto the sixth we go. Here's an invitation to get in on the action with exclusive on-field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Available dates are going fast, so act now to make your group reservations behind the Rays bullpen by calling 855 Group TV or online at RaysBaseball.com. It, it doesn't. It doesn't end. I, I've never seen that before. Again. It's prime location right there. Yeah. Alex Torres continues to stay busy. He's working down there in the bullpen. Andy Machado set to lead off the sixth. Number two in Buck Walters lineup. Pitch is too low, 1-0. Another Jeremy Hellickson start, another offensive outburst. Big swing and a miss by Machado. He went after the changeup. Texas and Toronto in the 17th now. Top of the 17th, tied 3 3. Well, they're playing a doubleheader. They just didn't know what it was scheduled. Miami and the Mets now on the top of the 15th tied 1 1. Strike two call. Rays batting around in the bottom of the fifth. That's the 10th time they've batted around this year. 
three of those against Baltimore. The season series between these two teams turning out to be a slugfest. They're going to score twice as many runs as they did last year in their season series. Yeah, vastly improved offenses. Well, and guess what both teams have done? They're right at the top of the major leagues in least amount of strikeouts. And that's what has allowed them. Yeah, everybody else continues the uh, trend in baseball for more and more strikeouts. But not these two teams. No. Well, they're realizing, listen, the more chances, the more times you put the ball in play, the more chances you're going to have. That's what's happened with the Rays. That's what Joe Madden said. Listen, the lack of our strikeouts is what has allowed us to put these big innings together. Put the ball in play, finding holes, extending innings. Oh, a great play by Longoria behind the back and the throw to first. Got it. Evan turned a great play into something that looked almost routine the backhand and the accurate throw well the ball up the line hit hard by Machado getting robbed by his counterpart then you got to stop make the strong accurate throw well again that's why he has heartburn I mean that's another level when you make a difficult play like that look as routine as Longoria can make that look some play by Evan Longoria there to take a double away from Machado. Nick Marcakis. One and oh. And boy, as a pitcher, don't you feel good out there? Oh, boy. I'm, I'm telling you, a, a starting pitcher, any pitcher on this Rays team has to just love the defense behind him. Not only the infield defense, the range these guys have, Loney over at first that's going to pick any mistakes and save errors. But then you've got the, the outfield. you got Desmond Jennings going to cover all sorts of ground. Kelly Johnson's played a nice left field. Been out there a whole lot more than he's been in the infield. And you've got Matt Joyce on right who's had a couple of hiccups, but, you know, to his credit, he worked his tail off up in Detroit trying to hone out some issues that he's had. Kekis fouls it out of play. One and two. And it works both ways. This defense has to love playing behind this Rays pitching staff. Well, and for the most part, these guys make the pitches they're supposed to make. And with the Rays setting up as many defensive alignments as they do, yeah. that's important too. Because yes. if they don't, it could get awfully frustrating. Yeah. But that has to work hand in hand. Kakis pops it up. Shallow right. Matt Joyce gloves it. Two up, two down in the sixth. Well, you get that great play from Longoria, and then the soft pop to shallow right. And instead of having a guy in second to start the inning and nobody out, you got two outs and nobody on. And the confidence continues to grow with Jeremy Hellickson. Started. That last game against Cleveland, he's rolled it into today's ball game. Did a great job of pitching out of trouble in the last inning. Two hits to lead off, first and second, nobody out, got nothing. And Jones sends a fly ball up the right side, slicing out of play, strike one. Jeremy coming in, three and two. 12 prior starts. Jones had a base hit his first time, grounded to short in the fourth. Bounds it back, that's out of play. 0 2. Rays will have Matt Moore set to pitch tomorrow afternoon. It's a 140 first pitch. Chris Tillman scheduled to go for Baltimore. Liner into left. That's going to be caught. 
Johnson straight ahead. The ball started to sink on Kelly, and he caught it anyway. One, two, three. Good D for the Rays in the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, Rays leading eight to nothing. The ending inning ended with a nice play by Kelly Johnson. The inning started with a nice play by Evan Longoria to rob Manny Machado. Here's Joe Madden's thoughts on the two third basemen to watch this series. There's some really good third basemen out there, and our, our guys, I think, you know, I can't say he's the best, but like, it was like three or four of the bests, or five of the, like, you got to include Beltre in that, obviously, too. Um, it, but it's outstanding to watch both of them play on a nightly basis, so when, you, when, we, when we play against each other, um, they make all the plays. They make all the plays, they make it look really easy, uh, very accurate arm, never in a panic, uh, all the things you want out of a defender, they're, they're really good. Machado and Longoria, two of the best of the hot corner guys. Yeah, we saw a great example of that from uh, Evan Longoria as he robbed his counterpart, Machado, in the top half of this inning. And boy, it was a great play and as routine as you can make a great play. Now, Ben Sobris down on the count, two strikes. He's looking for his fourth hit. Three for three, two doubles and a single. He scored twice and he has picked up a run batted in. Broken bat, a little hopper out the second. Clarity takes care of this. Zobris might want to try to put that bat back together with the way he was swinging it earlier tonight. Well, you just hope that from the right side he uses a different bat. Could be. Two different hitters, right and left. That's the way I used to do it, Dwayne. Yep, I know. Yep. It's an M110, Louisville Slugger M110 from the right side. And from the le left side, it was a T-141. How'd that work for you? I don't know, about a buck 50 with a home run. <laughs> All right. Not real good. The big cut by Kelly Johnson and a high popper on the infield. Hardy coming back now. He came in well in front of the bag and had to retreat almost to second base to make the catch. And, and I think this goes without saying, too, but no double ear flaps on the helmet. No question about that. I don't know that. if I needed to clarify that. No. Uh, never even entered my mind. If in Longoria takes the pitch outside, one and zero. You had more power left-handed. I, I don't know. That's where I hit my home run. Well, there you are. So, well, you but know. I think I hit further balls right-handed. So right. I'd hit him to the. Ah. Yeah. That that was the one thing I, I did not accomplish in my career that I wanted to so bad was the homer from both sides of the plate. Mm -hmm. I think some of the hardest balls I ever hit were right handed that never got out. Well, there are probably more line drives and towering home run shots. 
true. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I played a video game. <laughs> Two on the count to Evan. 14 hoppers to short. In the count. He's been on twice with a single and a walk. And ball four. Evans on for the third time tonight. Four walks given up by Baltimore pitching. Evan has two of them. TJ McFarland, number 66, his route to the big leagues came through. Lake County and Akron and Columbus all of that in the Cleveland organization a rule five selection by the Orioles this past December and here he is on the Orioles staff. Which often those picks do not work out. They got to be up in the big leagues all year. Pitch is a strike. McFarland pitching on his 24th birthday today. Strike the count to James Loney. A one one count. Two strikes. Ray scored a run in the first, two runs in the second, and five in the fifth when they sent nine men to the plate. Texas has taken a three to one lead in Toronto. They're at the top of the 18th. Ouch. Mets hitting in the bottom of the 15th, tied with the Marlins 1-1. Those are the tough games to lose. Whoever loses right now, it's looking like it could be Toronto. But you play that long, you're like, listen, if we're going to be here for six hours, better win. And the pitch is down. That was like that game. Two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Little tapper up the right side. That's going to stay fair. Davis takes care of it. A walk and a man left. We're through six onto the seventh. Eight nothing.
Rays have built an eight nothing lead tonight after winning last night's game two to one. They're here from St. Augustine. Well that's one of the great kept secrets of the state of Florida St. Augustine. Almost as good as the entire Tampa Bay region. One of the great spots in the entire country. Speaking of good, here's Alex Torres. How good has he been for the Rays? Look, look at those numbers. Ten and a third, 12 strikeouts, just three walks. He's had a couple of extended outings here for the Rays. Oh. Davis takes the first pitch. Fastball, and that's a strike. His command yeah. has been excellent. Yeah, and that was the one knock. The one issue that you had with Alex Torres was command. Well, he worked so hard this winter in refining that, and it is paying off in a big way. You can see that fastball just jumps on you. Only 92 miles an hour, but that swing by Davis, way tardy on that pitch. Well, you don't pick up the ball early off this guy no. either. Nope. And a cut and a miss. He just disposed of Chris Davis on three pitches and struck him out. Do an off speed pitch there to get him. Change up with conviction. I mean, he really rips into that change up. And that ball was up and in, and Davis way early. He sees that ball close to him with four seam spin. He's thinking getting beat with a heater in there. And it's 83. Davis goes, Where'd this guy come from? Send him back. <laughs> Matt Weeders. Starts him with a change up, strike one. That is a, I'm telling you, that is a pretty change up. It almost looks like he attempts to throw the change up harder than the fastball. I mean, you talk about selling a pitch. Well, he's really been fun to watch. Alex in six innings, four hits, five strikeouts, 96 pitches. Fly ball to center. Jennings there to make the catch. Two up, two down. And Torres with this. Run of success in his own understated way has developed a little presence out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, you know, first extended outing that he had was in Baltimore, and he threw four scoreless, allowed the Rays to come back and win that game in the ninth. That was number one. Had another long extended outing that was very impressive. But then in Detroit, you talk about a coming of age moment. Mm -hmm. Situation he got thrown into it. Cabrera. The hitters that he had to face, and yep. he did. Well, he fell behind Cabrera 3 and 0, came back to get him, and he set that up with a changeup. And Cabrera as much as tipped his cap to him. Two strikes the count to Hardy. I mean, you think about what he's done the last couple outings now. Cabrera in Detroit. The first man he faces here is Chris Davis. One, two, three. See ya. <laughs> Strike three call. One, two, three. Go the Orioles. Seventh inning stretch time here. Rays lead eight nothing.
Another highly impressive inning for Alex Torres. It is 8 nothing as we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Don't forget tomorrow it is a kid's Sunday and a family fun day here at Tropicana Field. And courtesy of KM Franks, first 10,000 kids, 14 and under, get this rope necklace. That'll be tomorrow prior to the finale of the Rays-Orioles game. That'll be a pretty good item for kids. Let me move the mic. Right there, guys. Back to you. Hey, there's the greatest hat shot of the night right there. Wow. I mean, he could walk outside. He'd never get wet. What about the people sitting behind him? Well, that's a different story. But he's taken care of. Well covered. Yeah. Ginormous. Love that hat. Desmond Jennings lays off the bottom of the seven. Takes a fastball. Missing. One ball, no strikes. You would go with your boots. Your boots wouldn't get wet either with a hat like that. Your boots. Yeah, I'm saying. Oh, yeah. It's actually trying to find one of those. 2 and 0. Oh. Could be trouble in the wind, though. Could lift you right off. Yeah, if that's not tight enough. <laughs> I like it. Two balls and a strike to count to Desmond as he faces TJ McFarland. Jennings walked and scored a run in the five run fifth for the Rays. Three and one. New catcher, the Baltimore Orioles. It's Taylor Teagarden behind the plate. Full count. The Rays get Jamie right up in their bullpen down the right field line. Desmond chops it foul. Alex Senatoris for the Rays. Gaussman and McFarland. For the Orioles. Jennings out on strikes. Which had some sink to it. Down movement by McFarland, taking it under the swing of Desmond Jennings for the first out. Toronto's tied the game. Bottom of the 18th. 3-3. Three, three. Come on. <laughs> a chop by Scott against the ship. And a toss to first. Luke is out number two. Hardy going over to take care of that out of the ship. Now Texas had taken a 3-1 to one lead and the Blue Jays have tied it. Takes it down one and one. So Toronto, they went into the bottom of the 18th tied, right? So it's 3 3, bottom of the 18th. Still one and one. The Jays have used nine pitchers in that game. Wow. Wow. Texas five. Randy Wolf is working his seventh inning. Foul. Oh, no, it's fair. Grabbed by Machado on a high throw. Safe at first. The ball just inside the line, not hit there hard. And Lobatone has his third hit. Now hustling up the line, trying to get there. Machado, he makes a perfect throw. He's got a chance, but in rushing, ball sails on him a little bit, and Lobatone able to sneak under the attempted tag. See that late movement. It's the 11th hit for the Rays. 
Yeah, Texas tied that game with two in the ninth. So it's 3 3 in the bottom of the 18th in Toronto. Escobar takes a strike. to count Farland in relief of Gaussman base hit through the hole left side Escobar is three out of four and he's another guy in this raised lineup utilizing the whole field he shot a ball the other way earlier in the game. This one he gets out in front on, is able to hammer it in the hole between short and third. Not a bad pitch at all by McFarland, but Escobar stays on that pitch very well. Able to shoot the gap. So with two outs, the Rays have put two aboard. Top of the order, Matt Joyce now. Is it it's a foul ball for a strike? Let's see if McFarland continues to attack him with the fastball. He threw a couple by him in his last at bat. We weren't really by him, just like Matt had trouble picking up the late movement, dipping down beneath his swing. Tapper foul. Mets are hitting in the bottom of the 16th. They're still tied with the Marlins 1 1. Yankees have a 3 to 1 lead in Seattle. New York batting in the top of the ninth of that game. The Angels and the Red Sox have another game to play. Chop right side. He's going to cover first. McFarland makes it close. He gets over there just in time. He was a little late getting started. So the Rays are out in the seventh. Two hits, two left, no runs. Eight nothing Rays. to the top of the eighth where the Rays are shutting out the Orioles eight nothing and if things continue like this the Rays will be looking for a sweep tomorrow against the Orioles right here at 140 but be sure to join us earlier than that at one o'clock for the Rays live pregame show driven by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers we'll take a closer look at Andrew Friedman legend in the making talk about Matt Moore who looks to bounce back from that Cleveland outing and have a special offensive comparison and also be sure to stick with us tonight 
for the post-game show presented by Checkers. Todd and Arrestus running the ship as usual. I'll be in the clubhouse gathering interviews. And Dwayne and B.A., you two always bring us such a lovely breakdown. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. We'll look forward to uh, the reports from the clubhouse and the post-game show as well, immediately following the coverage of this game. And in this game, the Rays have built an 8 nothing lead. They've out-hit Baltimore 12-4. Jamie Wright is pitcher number three for Joe Madden and Jim Hickey. Jamie Wright coming in to get a little bit of work, stay sharp. Chris Dickerson fouls the first pitch. A fastball from Jamie Wright. Blue Jays have beaten Texas tonight in 18, 4 to 3. Rajon Davis singles home Emilio Bonifacio. One strike to count. Bonifacio had gone first to third on a bad pickoff attempt by Wolf. And Davis got a base hit to end that game at 18 4 3 Blue Jays. What a tough loss for Randy Wolf. Mm -hmm. You're coming to the ballpark as a reliever thinking maybe I get in, maybe I don't. Certainly not for seven plus innings. And then you take the loss. One and one to count. Pitch is low. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. Ellickson for six, Torres for one. Torres a one, two, three, seventh with two strikeouts. Well, Torres just came in and did exactly what he's been doing. Well, his confidence sky high right now. His stuff is following suit. Two. Full count. Comes back to strike out Dickerson on a foul tip strikeout. Yeah, nice little cutter there by Jamie Wright. A full count. He keeps this close to him, cuts it just a little bit, and gets it under the swing. Of its own, able to hang on. Flaherty. One ball, no strikes. And a shallow left. Here comes Johnson. Two up, two down. Nate McLeod, top of the order. White Sox have beaten Oakland four to one. John Danks gets his first win. He's now one and two. Canerco and Dunn hit home runs for Chicago. Cloud lifts a pop fly short center. Jennings takes care of that. One, two, three, go the Orioles. Rays lead. Eight nothing.
Eight nothing Rays lead coming into bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. At least 81 times a year the Tampa Bay Rays open the doors to Tropicana Field for game day. Fans may come for the baseball. But from hot dogs and Cracker Jacks to music and giveaways a major league game experience is multifaceted on the next edition of Inside the Rays learn about the vast number of individuals and the preparation it requires to make each outing a memorable experience catch it all tomorrow after our Rays coverage only on Sun Sports. You're not going to see that everywhere or every day. Ben Zobrist facing Pedro Strope. Pitch is high. A couple of changes here for the Baltimore Orioles. Strope, their third pitcher, and Alexi Casilla now in the game at second base. Two thirds from McFarland. The Rays got a run off him, seven off the starter, and here's Strope. What's played Pedro Strobe? You can see it right there. The walks, 14 walks and 17 and two thirds. Not only does that add those base runners, but shows just a lack of command, which has then led to big hits for the opponents. Got a big arm. There's Garcia. Zobris go. He did not on the appeal, and that'll take the count to two and two. Stroke just activated today from the disabled list. He'd had some lower back issues. And that's always nice, too, when you can get right out there. You know, be activated. Haven't been out there in a little while. Get an opportunity that day. Zobris out on strikes. Well, that coupled with as hard as he can throw, yep. if he has command, he can be very tough. Yeah, absolutely right. Great off-speed pitch right there to get Ben Zobris. That's what it is with a lot of these big throwers. You know, that sometimes guys are so, you know, they really put their body into it. And that, you know, we talk about having a repeatable delivery. Sometimes it's not so repeatable. That will affect command. And when you put yourself into bad counts, the big league hitters can turn around 95-96. To strike Johnson swinging and missing. A lot of these guys, if they know it's coming, they'll get it. They'll time it up and get it. Except if you're Jake McGee. Because <laughs> they know it's coming and he still blows you away. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. It is. That. I know. I mean, you think about Jake McGee, and I know that he's been using his slider a little bit more now, but if you're a hitter, you're not even concerned with the slider. You're going up there looking for a fastball because you know you're going to see. A ton of them. Billy Johnson out on strikes. Well, the Rays did have their way on home runs against Strope, Billy Johnson, and Evan Longoria in Baltimore at Orioles Park. Gloria lifted. Ryan Roberts will swing the bat. Fouls it. Strike one. It's been tough to get Roberts and Sean Rodriguez enough plate appearances yeah. in this stretch of seeing one right hander right after another. We'll see what happens in the Red Sox series. Tomorrow the Rays will face another right hander, Chris Tillman. The Rays figure to get John Lester. There's a base hit against the right hander. Roberts pinch hitting singles into right. He's aboard with two outs. Well, for not getting a lot of PT lately, Ryan Roberts, nice job of staying on that offering from Strobe that was on the outer half, shooting that ball the other way. James Loney. Loney 
swinging over the top of that pitch strike one. James singled in a run in the five run fifth. He also scored a run in that inning. Chop to the right side. See you with his toss to first. No runs a hit. And a raise leave a man. We go to the ninth. It's 8 nothing Tampa Bay. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Tampa Bay Rays and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. Still time to vote in the AT&T social media poll. The best defensive first baseman in Rays history would be one TB1 Travis Lee. DB2 Carlos Pena, DB3 Casey Kotchman, and TB4 James Loney. Ryan Roberts stays in the game to play third. Sam Fold enters the game in center. And the new pitcher for the Rays is Kyle Farnsworth. Pitch from Barnesworth. Oh, and outside. Andy Machado, one out of three. He was robbed in the sixth on a great play by Longoria down at third. One and one. For the Rays at the moment, three games back of Boston. This win could make it two and a half. And if the Angels could beat the Red Sox again, the Rays could be within two games of Boston. He takes the count to two and two. Well, you'd love to get within that striking distance with them coming into town. Well, that would make for a great series, oh, wouldn't it? Boy, it'd be fun. You better believe it. Well, and that's the way it's going to be the rest of the way. You're going to see those teams bunched up there. You really don't see anybody running away with it. Short right. This is Joyce coming in. One out. Marcakis on his way to the plate. Yeah. 
Marquez is 0 for 3 tonight. Texas and Toronto went 18 innings before the Blue Jays beat the Rangers 4 to 3. A strike to Marquez. The Marlins are batting in the 18th at New York, tied with the Mets 1-1. One ball, one strike. How about this for Rays pitching? The Orioles came into this series the powerhouse on the road offensively. Ooh, yeah. mean, they've had a great year offensively, but they came into the series the best thing going for uh, offenses away from home. Didn't sound quite right, did it? The best offense on the road. I knew what you meant. I got you. And the Rays held them to a run and two hits last night. And one out into the ninth inning. They shot him out tonight on four hits. Well, that's where you start to get excited about what this team's capable of. Talked about the pitching starting to come around, especially that back end of the bullpen with McGee's last 10, 11 outings, Fernando's last seven, Peralta. He starts to shoot the game down. Chop out to second. Zobris throws out Marquez. Two outs. And when you get performances from the starter like you got today from Jeremy Hellickson last night Chris Archer Alex Cobb's been throwing the ball great Matt Moore's been outstanding we saw what Roberto Hernandez was capable of in Miami and he was going to beat anybody that night and then you're awaiting the return of David Price boy it starts to get scary when you think about that pitching staff rounding into shape and then the offense and the defense Steve Pierce is hitting and he takes the first pitch for a strike. He's in the spot originally occupied by Adam Jones. One and one. So the Rays. One out away as a staff from recording their seventh shutout of the season. Foul back. Pitch up. And here's a big cut but fouled it. Cleveland has eight shutouts. Three teams over in the National League will have nine plus. The American League, Cleveland with eight. Seattle has seven and the Rays six right now. And out away from number seven. <laughs> two up, two down in the ninth. The Rays broke this one open with a five run fifth. They scored a run in the first and added two in the second. Batted around and scored five times in the fifth inning. One two foul out of play. We'll do the one two again. He's trying to nail down this final out and move a half game ahead. Now Baltimore in the standing. Gray's trying to move into third place. One is down. It's two and two. Boy, boy, tough, tough pitch to lay off of. Good slider there by Farnsworth, looking to end this ball game. Close. The Yankees have just beaten the Mariners three to one out in Seattle. Andy Pettit gets the win. That's his fifth of the season. 250 for his career. Wow. Balls, two strikes. Two outs, bases empty. And a cut the miss. That'll do it. One, two, three. Go the Orioles. 
Barthrett strikes out Pierce, and the Rays have spun a four hit combination shutout, pounding out 13 hits and defeating the Baltimore Orioles 8 to nothing as Jeremy Hellickson works the first six to get his fourth win. He's four and two. The loss pinned on the young right hander Kevin Gossman now 0 and 3. It required two hours and 51 minutes to play this game. And the Rays go to 34 and 27. So they move a half game up on the Baltimore Orioles and into third place in the America League East. And we'll see how close they can come to first, depending on the outcome of the Angels Red Sox doubleheader, the second game yet to be played. Just as we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. The Rays broke an open when they scored five in the fifth. A triple off the bat of Luke Scott came with the bases loaded. Scoring Longoria, Loney, and Jennings. And pretty much sealing the fate of the Baltimore Orioles. Luke Scott with three runs batted in on one swing of the bat. He'd also walked and scored. He scores two runs en route to the Rays' victory. And Todd Callis standing by with Luke Scott right now. Dwayne, thanks. Luke, you've been seeing, we were just talking about two weeks worth of right-handed starters. You haven't seen many lefties lately. It took a lefty out of the bullpen. Something about mechanics or your swing, where you've been pretty good on lefties this year? Yeah, I you know, just kind of try to take what they give me, shorten up, see the ball long, let it get deep, and you know, not try and do too much. I know you, you haven't said much during this stretch, but I know you've been working hard. How good did that feel to to clear the bases with that one. Uh, I guess you can compare it to feeling uh, having someone hold your head underwater so you turn purple in your face and then pull your head up when you're about to pass out and you gasp a deep breath of air. You saw that one in Cleveland last year when you, when you cleared the wall where you were going through a stretch. So I guess a similar feeling with the monkey off the bat. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely describe it that way. You know, baseball's a, a tough game. Been going through you know, a difficult stretch, but... Um, you know, all I can do is give Jesus my best every day and stay with the process. And then from there, you know, you know, see how things play out. Our buddy upstairs, Brian Anderson, said he was giving a little blessing to your bat, but did he actually switch from the bat that he, he was working with before the game? Yeah, I use different models against lefties and, and righties. So, you know, I just I have my bat and I just said, you know, all the hits and home runs and RBIs and extra base hits that he didn't give up that are still left in his arm, go ahead and just put him right here in this bat. And so, uh, you know, it was a good thing. It worked out. Luke, you know how powerful this offense is in the other dugout. It used to be teammates with most of those guys. What are your thoughts about the pitching performances the first two days from the Rays? I think it really says a lot about our pitching staff and, you know, what Jeremy Hellickson did today and Torres coming out of the bullpen. All the guys did a great job. Uh, that lineup is dangerous, one through nine. They're balanced. They hit the ball out of the ballpark. They hit doubles. They can play small ball. They have speed. You know, they just do a lot of things really, really well, and that's why they're at the top of the league in, in offense. So, you know, to combat that and, you know, put up zeros, uh, it really says a lot what our pitchers have done. Nice job with the big triple today. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you. All right, Todd, thank you very much. Rays winners 8 to nothing after taking yesterday's game 2-1. to one. Tonight they limit the Orioles to just four hits. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 